Spring has officially sprung here in the Pacific Northwest. The trees have shaken off the winter cold and are blooming in a sensory delight of color, texture, and smell. The longer days bathe the landscape in a gentle warming light. The renewal of nature on display really puts me in the mood to talk about the disgusting, rotten poo-poo men of the Death Guard. The Death Guard's thematic motif is a cycle of death, decay, and rebirth. A symbol of that cycle, featured prominently throughout the army, is the humble fly, a creature that thrives on decaying matter to produce new life. The symbol of the fly has a prominent history in human culture, stretching back to the beginnings of civilization, with both positive and negative associations. Today on The Cozy Painter, I'm going to paint my favorite model in the Death Guard range, as well as discuss the symbol of the fly throughout human history, as well as the future history of 40k. I am not a historian, nor a theologist. The information I'll be presenting is my understanding of the research that I did. If I'm misinformed about something, feel free to respectfully give the correct information in the comments. The purpose of this video is to examine the real-world influence on a work of fiction, not to be an academic thesis. With that said, let's get into it. Some of the earliest depictions of flies in human history come from the ancient Mesopotamian region of what is now Iraq. The fly could be considered a lesser symbol of the entity Nergal, who served as the god of the underworld. Nergal was a synthesis of a few deities that were worshipped in the region. Meslamtia was a god of agriculture and warfare, representing the destructive power of the afternoon sun, as well as violence through combat and destruction. The other deity was Era, a god of pestilence and chaos. The two deities grew to be nearly synonymous with each other, prompting modern scholars to consider the two gods as one being, Nergal. Nergal would later gain dominion of the underworld, either through a divine gift or through marriage to the goddess queen, Ereshkigal, depending on the mythology. His primary association grew to be domain over the underworld, war, pestilence, and death. In my research, I couldn't find a definitive source of Nergal's association with flies. However, we can infer that flies are closely associated with Nergal's domain of death and pestilence. We know that flies exist in Nergal's underworld due to the Sumerian poem The Descent of Inanna, where the goddess Inanna is led through the underworld by a talking fly. The symbol of the fly commonly appeared in stone engravings used throughout the region. In a myth of a deadly flood sent from the gods, the dead humans in the water are compared to flies, and the gods buzz around them also akin to flies. The connection between flies, death, and Nergal, though not explicitly stated in any source that I found, can be inferred from these details. Sumerian and Babylonian cultures weren't the only ancient civilizations to prominently feature the fly, so let's take a look at ancient Egypt. In Egypt, flies were viewed as creatures of persistence and perseverance. It was common for jewelry bearing the sigil of a fly to be given as military honors. It was also believed that the fly symbol could ward off disease and other insects when worn. The sigil of the fly was probably not exclusive to valor in battle, as Queen Ahotep famously wore a fly-adorned necklace known as the Order of the Golden Fly. There have also been various servants and other positions found to be buried with fly-themed finery. Flies in Egypt don't always have a positive connotation, however. In the religious text, the Book of Exodus, God sends a swarm of flies to plague the pharaoh and bring ruin to the lands of Egypt. Though apparently there is debate on this story, with the Hebrew text not specifying the type of animal or insect that would comprise the swarm, and the biblical text specifically mentioning flies. Flies would continue to appear in religious texts throughout history. In Christian and Hebrew demonology, the entity Beelzebub is considered to be the lord of flies, filth, and dung. He sometimes presides over an infernal group called the Order of the Fly, of which, according to the 1818 book Dictionnaire Infernal by J. Colin de Plancy, the Mesopotamian god Nergal is a member of. Early religious texts suggest that Beelzebub is either a high-ranking demon of hell or another name for Lucifer himself. 
In John Milton's 1667 poem, Paradise Lost, Beelzebub is a demon prince second in command of hell behind Lucifer. Beelzebub's domain of flies and hell creates a strong negative connection between them and the death of the soul and body. Flies representing death would become a popular expression with 15th and 16th century artists. Musca depicta, or painted fly, was a trend to paint realistic flies on the subject of your painting. There were several reasons why artists began doing this, from flexing their artistic rendering skills, to playing a silly prank on their instructors, or to symbolically show that the subject being portrayed was dead or corrupted by sin. In this scenario, we again see the fly being associated with Christian beliefs of damnation, mortality, and sin. This type of representation extends into our modern day art as well. We don't have to look too deep to find examples of unholy flies in the media today. Flies are often used to depict signs of unholy corruption or possession, or sometimes to be a visual shorthand to imply the presence of death. Movies like Amityville Horror, Hereditary, and Constantine use flies to represent a dangerous or demonic presence to the audience. Video games like Eternal Darkness for the GameCube use flies crawling on the screen of your TV to show the intrusion of the other into the sanctity of your mind and your real-world existence. Throughout human history, flies have been an enduring symbol that resonates with different cultures for different reasons, both positive and negative. Let's jump forward about 38,000 years and see how the human race views flies in the Imperium of Man. The fly aesthetic is really prominent in the 41st Millennium Death Guard. Across several models in the line, we can see actual flies perched on the feculent fighters. Maggots are spilling out of the bulging and cracked armor. Some models have decorative fly sigils arranged in accordance with the infernal numerology of which Mortarian obsesses. Some models are mid-transformation of becoming an actual fly, like the model I'm painting today. Typhus, champion of the Death Guard, is essentially a living demonic fly incubator, unleashing swarms that zombify his unfortunate victims. The weaponization of flies can even be seen in their rules. Stratagems like Cloud of Flies summon a swarm around the model so thick that they can't be targeted. The stratagem Vermin Whispers invokes countless demonic flies to guide the unit's aim. The Ferrymen of the Sixth Death Guard Plague Company are surrounded by thick clouds of flies that hamper enemy movement in an aura and extend the range of Nurgle's putrescent gifts. The fly motif is strong throughout the Death Guard, but what about the thematic tie to real-world symbolism? The thematic throughline is pretty compelling. The similarities between the Mesopotamian god Nergal and the Chaos god Nurgle are pretty obvious. Both rule over a domain of death, pestilence, and war. Both Nurgles are agents of unnatural, inflicted death. The Egyptian veneration of the fly's tenacity can be interpreted as the unyielding nature of the Death Guard. They are both implacable adversaries who thrive surrounded by death and decay. The belief that a fly sigil can ward off disease and other pests could be similar to a devotee of Nurgle becoming inured to pain, death, and disease by transforming them into its vector. The demonic association of flies through religion correlates with the demonic corruption of the soul through worship of Nurgle. The faithful are enslaved by Nurgle, with some becoming literally demon-possessed. The sinful heretics of Nurgle have fallen from the light of the God Emperor and are dead to his grace in a state of spiritual post-mortem. The thematic parallels of the fly between the real world and that of 40k are incredibly strong and create a compelling choice for the design of the Death Guard line. The fly is a powerful symbol that subconsciously delivers a huge amount of information, not only about the physical corruption of the Death Guard, but also the spiritual. It's an inspired design choice that I would love to see more of. This Blightlord Terminator is one of my favorite models in the entire game. The subject is portrayed somewhere in the middle of a slow transformation into some kind of hideous fly avatar, just like Jeff Goldblum in the movie The Fly. It's unique amongst the other Blightlords, but still feels at home in the Death Guard range. 
This conversion was a huge pain to keep together, as if some outside force wanted to stop its very creation. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out, rough spots and all. I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter, and until next time, stay cozy.